Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. On tap, we've got what should be a fairly intriguing matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Minnesota Vikings. With that, we send you up to U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Standing by our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach. U.S. Bank Stadium holds just under 70,000 spectators, and they've come out in full force for this one. A fantastic atmosphere here in Minneapolis. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you look at this Vikings ball club. They come in with some fresh legs as they got the week off last week thanks to the early season bye. And usually you hope your bye comes a little bit later in the year. But when you get a chance to get fresh legs back, you take that time and you run with it. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jaguars, they've come in on a nice run of recent form. Four wins out of five. And last week they put together a three-touchdown victory and were never challenged in that game. Let's see if they have a little bit of a letdown here. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season, Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. This will be taken in at the 1. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. As you get a peek at a man who entered the league in 2012 as a third-round draft pick, Nick Foles. And they are in rhythm on offense because of him. I mean, right now, he's got everything going the way he wants to, finding the receivers the way he wants to, looking over defenses. No interceptions is the number I lock in on before a touchdown pass isn't so bad either. Yeah, what a game he had last week. Now Foles. And the catch made here by Marquise Lee. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here's Foles going for the deep ball. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. And now a look at the offense for Jacksonville. So let's all work together on this one because it's natural to just watch the football. But I want all of us to watch the center of this offensive line, the center and the two guards. They've got to be able to control the point of attack, and they didn't do such a good job on that last play. Plenty of opportunities to redeem themselves. They'll have to take advantage of that and start to make progress. You need your wide receivers as blockers. Sometimes they get a hold. The big runs are often a result of what they do on the perimeter. In this case, got caught holding, and this one will come back. The catch made by James O'Shaughnessy, the tight end. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Check, crunch, crunch, on the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. On second down now, Dillon. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. Well, look now at our starting defense. Currently number one in the NFL against the run. Now if they could just get their pass defense in line, this unit would be really, really strong. And remember the conversation with the defensive coordinator? He wants them to rush the passer better. He wants to see the quarterback on the ground. They've got to create some sacks. And he said it starts early and often. We'll see if they can get to him. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. 
not the opening possession they were looking for, especially on the road. No doubt about it, because they wanted to come out and establish a little momentum right away. But now bringing up a fourth down, an empty possession, not what they were seeking. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the seven yard line. Absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air. And that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. Cousins now to throw on first down. And he's going to go down in the end zone. Cousins taken down for the safety. Well, we, we thought these two defenses, they might come to play. One has already come to play here, a safety for the opening points of the game. Brandon, let's file this play away because if it turns out to be a tight game, who knows? This could wind up being the difference. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! go Foles go. and the Jags come up now first and 10. Right at the 30. On the draw, this is Fournette. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Sean Davis that time on the tackle. Throwing on second and eight. Foles. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. The open man is Shark. It's complete. Fournette, a first down carry. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. A shotgun give to Fournette. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Stops short of the 25, but that second effort got him a couple extra. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now Leonard Fournette. And he's going to get forward for about five, but that may be coming back. What say you, Mr. Referee? So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Completes it to Lee. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 15-yard line. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. On second and nine, Foles. This will be caught just inside the 10. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Foles. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Some mistakes already in the first quarter. If he holds on to that one, first down. Yeah, and I guarantee you that at least one defensive back out there has reminded him of that fact, trying to get into his head and hoping that'll affect him the rest of the game. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? 
And he'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. It's a gain of 16, and the Vikings have the first down as well. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Throwing his Cousins, and it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge, and it's going to bring up fourth down. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And a nice pickup as this one gets them to the 10-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets them to second and four. A quick throw, finding Lee out wide. And he'll lose yardage and be down at the seven-yard line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. He'll drop to throw. And going deep for Hill. And got his man complete. And all the way to the opposite 48. A big third down play there for the Jags. 45 yards. Well, that'll help get you out of danger. So much for playing it conservatively back towards your own goal line. That aggressive mentality, sometimes you can use it, and they did there against the defense who probably thought to themselves, there's no way they take a shot here this deep in their own territory. False start, offense. That's going to set them back five yards. Be alert, be alert. 54 Mike. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. Here we go, D. Here I come. Here I come. Chance, chance. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. They get the penalty yardage back plus a yard. Six yard gain, and it's second and nine. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. And that one is knocked down, but I don't think it's going to matter. The defense looked like they jumped. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call, mark off the five, and keep it moving. The ball gets bumped up. It's now second and four after the penalty. Silver, silver. Check it back. They'll try the right side here with Fournette. Just a yard on the pick up there, and it'll leave them with a third and three. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Looking to throw. And that is incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. Come on, baby, let's go. Get excited. Let's go, let's go. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. 
Now Cousins. And that is incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Cousins to throw it. Looking for Giggs, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, we know this defense has athleticism. Spots like that prove us right. I love the way that you spotlighted the athleticism because you and I both know the best athletes on the field, they play on defense. Oh, I don't know. I was a kicker. You got to remember that now. Come on, come on. Fine. Point after try, forthcoming. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Let's go. Let's go. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Yo, 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 yo. Yo. They'll run on first down. Benjamin. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Now a give right side. Benjamin. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Let's go. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. First carry now for Alexander Madison. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter. And a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. 12-0 the score after one on EA Sports. Throwing on second and three. Cousins, and he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Seven yards there and a first down. On first down, Benjamin, and he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Draw play, Madison. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And he fires one, but incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Well, maybe a little bit of an anxious moment there as that ball got closer and closer, but it does curl in. Yeah, actually did a little bit of a slow dance there with the left upright, didn't it? But it had just enough space as you said, for it to curl in. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. 
Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. Lee's got it over the middle. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Downfield offense. Too far downfield, something those linemen have to watch out for, and that time it costs them. Fournette running out of the gun. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. That one going against the guard, Andrew Norwell. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. Now Foles off the play fake to Fournette. It's Hill, complete. That one covers 29 we yards, first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there, perfectly executed crossing route. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 37-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. And he completes it to Westbrook. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Fournette on the counter, and they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Second and 13. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for our Darius Stewart there, and it'll bring up third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. And his kick here is good. And yeah, that's going to bump up their lead now to 15 to 3. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25 yard line. Adam Thielen, he gets set to go again with the rest of this offense. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times, just like the ticking time bomb, the longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. From the 29. Cousins, he's got Smith here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They get 14 there, first down Vikings. They'll run on first down, Benjamin. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. To throw is Cousins. And this one complete to Smith. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. 
That one a first down pickup of eight. On first down, Benjamin. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Throwing on second and eight, Cousins. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. It'll be a gain of four. And that'll bring up a third down. Cousins. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He only has a single solo carry, one. Numero uno, second quarter. They need to get in the ball more, don't they? I'm not the greatest statistician in the world. Yeah, you are. But a back like that with only one carry kind of takes me back to college in the classroom. Not enough evidence to declare what you should do the rest of the game. Give him the ball some more and find out. Will they incorporate him? We'll find out. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Fournette. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Eric Kendricks in on the tackle. On second down, Dillon. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for them. Show them that you're supposed to get the football. On the run, it's Fournette. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. That catch good for five. It's third down. Now Foles. Open man is Stewart. It's complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 31-yard line. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Foles now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Coverage there by the safety, Harrison Smith. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Roughing the passer, defense. So mark off the yardage for roughing the passer. And I've seen this before on a screen pass. Not only are you rushing the passer, you're rushing him deeper than normal. And I think a little frustration kicks in at the end. You're going to hit him anyway when you shouldn't. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Hill, the intended receiver once again. That'll bring up second down. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guy's playing it. I'm really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Here's Foles. And the throw there going to be incomplete. 
You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed, if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But there's also something to challenging your offense right here. You know, hey, guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. Benjamin's got it. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. It's caught. Smith. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. In the game you're watching, it's the former Super Bowl MVP, Nick Foles, with a strong first half. He's thrown for close to 200 yards already. And that's helped propel his guys into the lead as we send you back to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in the second half. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Here's Madison running on first down, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two there, second. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. Rudolph on the receiving end from Cousins. 
Give him nine on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, here's Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 45-yard line. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. After seeing that, maybe time to go back to some downfield throws here. Yeah, anything, change it up, because the teams that win, the best teams, they're the ones that make adjustments. Doesn't mean you can't come back to what you thought you could get done. Sometimes when you open things up a little bit, you can get back to what you wanted to do before. Yeah. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Cousins. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. Cousins going to come up on a first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Here's Cousins. Completes it to Benjamin. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And finally, wrestled down at the 11. 23 yards on the play. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They've got a first and 10 at the 11. To throw, Cousins. And this one's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And now it's second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. An 11-yard touchdown as his guys are back within a single score. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. So that one, a long 11-play drive, and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. So here are the Jaguars to take over on offense. They're working on a four-game winning streak, and they lead this one as well right now as they start first and 10. A pass there, complete to Westbrook. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A big one there for the Jags, 18 yards, first down. Catch number 100 for his career right there, and it's good enough to keep the chains moving. They'll run with Fournette. Oh, Fournette loses it. It's out, and the Vikings pick up the football. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even gonna tip it. I'm gonna doff my cap to him. Congratulations, big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Kirk Cousins now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if he can drive the bus here again on this drive. To throw on second and six, Cousins. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. 
On third down, Cousins. Open man is Thielen. It's complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. This home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? They finally got one. Yes, they did. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. A free five yards as the defense jumps. Right. I know right. it's an anticipation right. game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. So a first and five now after the five-yard penalty from the neutral zone infraction. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. So instead of forcing the field goal, it'll be first and goal. Yeah, the force was trying to make something happen that just didn't need to, right? I mean, the plays happen, let it go. It's over. Instead, it creates a penalty. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. He was trying to find Chad Beebe that time, but it'll be second and goal. On second down now, Benjamin. And he'll get it. Touchdown, Minnesota. A great effort there with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Vikings have taken the lead. And that moment we just saw always so special for any rookie, the first touchdown of his career. And there's nothing like anticipation, is there? You know he's been dreaming about it, thinking about it. It's been a part of every bit of his being. And finally, it gets done. He's got to feel great right now. Throwing, Cousins. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. And in the third quarter here, they were trying to push that to a three-point game, but instead it'll stay at one. And I'm a big proponent of not chasing points or going for two too early. But in this case, I understand why. You know, if you kick an extra point, you're just up two, yeah. right? So field goal still puts the other team ahead. So you go for two here and protect the field goal lead. They didn't get it done, though. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They're looking to turn things around here. They've been shut down in this third quarter, and that was after a good first half offensively. And you wonder where it all goes, and it feels like it goes away fast because it takes some time to build up good momentum, great play calling, excellent execution, and then in like a blink of an eye, <laughs> you're losing the game. How do you get back there again? I'm sure they've talked about it, and they've got a plan, 
Now can they put it into practice? The lead gone, now the search to find it again. They'll toss it to Fournette. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. From just shy of midfield, Foles. That's out to his running back, Fournette. Not able to get a single yard there, and it'll bring up third down. Usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve, and that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no gain. Foles, and that is incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and they'll be facing a third and 12. Cousins from the gun on third. A bullet throw, but incomplete. It certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. And Quigley now on to punt as he sends this one away. Good coverage there. An even 50-yard punt leads to a return of five. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now falls off the play fake to Fournette. That one complete. He finds Shark. Touchdown, Jaguars! D.J. Shark. His second touchdown on the season. And once again, the Jaguars are back out in front. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there. And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Now Doug Marone not even hesitating. They're going to go for two. Check, 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 check. Here we go. They will run it. It's Fournette. And he is not going to make it to the goal line. So the defense holds. And this remains a five-point game. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offense has spent a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. This will be taken in at the one. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Here comes Kirk Cousins now to lead his offense back out there. And after the slow start, the numbers show he has really straightened things out. How often sometimes is that that you come into a game and the defense is game planned a little differently than you expected? More often than maybe people realize, so adjustments are often a big part of each and every game, and it's not just getting to halftime. It's series to series to make it work, and being able to hang in there when there's a little adversity early and see them able to flip it around, it's kind of gratifying for a team to watch, especially for a coach. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. Now Cousins. And that will be incomplete. Pass. Incomplete. 
had to pass there third and long on your own side of the field just couldn't come up with anything that's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down even throwing the football call that 49 yards on the punt they do get seven back on the return and the offense will take over with a new set of downs they go play action here on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Anthony Barr comes rumbling in for the sack. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, Oftentimes, the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Offense. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. On second down, here's Fournette. And a very short pick up there across the 15 to the 16. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Now Foles. And that is incomplete. critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there that clock keeps rolling has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out now they're likely gonna have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline a good return there call it 13 yards and the vikings will take over here first and 10. so here's a first and 10 at the 38. now cousins and Rudolph has it, the tight end. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Cousins. And he slings one that's incomplete. The Vikings on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This time it's third and three. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. And this is going to be nowhere close. Needed some inches and ended up losing yardage. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. Uh, being just short of midfield, they decide to take a crack at it on fourth down. They don't come through. Sometimes it's just showing confidence in your defense. You know that they're good, and they'll take care of you. A lot of coaches during the week will announce to their team, we're going to be aggressive, guys. We're going to go for it. Hey, defense, you got me? <laughs> a little bit of a challenge to them to see if they'll pick up the rest of the team. We'll see how they respond now. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on fourth, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. <laughs> they didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? <laughs> that was planned going into it, not necessarily defense. to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold up. But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Now we'll see what his offense can do. A nice looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. 
25 yards that time. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually you're going to run into their territory, and that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or a play on the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. And this is caught at the eight. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown, and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings have once again taken the lead. Well, he's given him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. This will be taken in at the one. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. He was looking for James O'Shaughnessy as tight end. But now it's third down. Here's Foles. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, with their pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Here's Logan Cook now as the drive goes backwards. So he's on to punt it away. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. That really sets them back. A loss of six. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. It's a seven-yard gain that gets him back to the original line of scrimmage. Third and ten. Throwing his cousins. Benjamin's got it. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. 
Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Boy, he ran free there after the catch as that winds up going for 38. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them a lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. They have gone to the fourth quarter, by the way, in that game in Cleveland. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. They'll set up to throw, and if they could hold on to that lead, it would be win number four on the season for them. Trying to get it there to D.D. Westbrook, but it's going to be second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Second and 10. They'll let this go for the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So now third and 10, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Looking to throw. Open man is Westbrook, complete. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Second and six. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The running back, Leonard Fournette, his intended receiver. And now it's third down. He'll drop to throw. That's going to be caught. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Offense. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, <laughs> trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. Boy, hard to ask for a better game thus far. 27 apiece is our score as the kick's away. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Now left side on the swing pass. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Give him 18 there and give the Vikings a first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. They try and run on first down, but this one going to lose a couple yards as they get him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Going to run with Madison again. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Working out of the gun. Cousins. Hard throw. Incomplete. 
The defense did their job. Fourth quarter, big stand. No doubt about it because the offense has been yelling at him from the sideline. Just do us a favor. Oh, they come after him, and it's blocked. It's picked up, and this is a live ball, remember. And they will score. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. In for the score. And they're able to break the tie and move out in front here in this fourth quarter. Partners, you well know every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Extra point right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So the very rare blocked punt scooped and returned for a touchdown. What an exciting play. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. First down, here's Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. A first down throw for Cousins. Completes it to Benjamin. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 16, and the Vikings have the first down as well. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And he rifles one incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. They'll throw again. Cousins. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 28. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Back to throw. He's got Smith here. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. He's back to throw. And he's able to find Diggs. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. He'll look to throw. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. Back to throw. Clock's under a minute. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. They'll look to throw. Exactly what they were looking for. They've been giving up yardage. They've been letting them drive right downfield. But they got a sack right there. How about that for a little bit of revenge? Cousins. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. And yes, they want the points, so they will decline the penalty, no question there. You don't think they spent a couple seconds mulling over what the penalty would do I don't even do know why they asked the sideline. Not at all. When you put the ball in the end zone on a takeaway, take the points and keep moving. And here come the whistles and a timeout with seven seconds left. So now this will be in all likelihood to force overtime. And he has got it. So barring something crazy on the kickoff, we're looking at an extra period to decide this one. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. This is taken at the three. 
And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Foles, he's going to float this one deep right side. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. This will be fielded at the six. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. They'll run with Madison, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Tight ends on the Lucy. Tight ends on the Lucy. Tight ends on the Lucy. Easy. Another carry now for Madison. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. In need of a third and ten conversion to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Here's Cousins. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Well done by the defense. They did their job here in overtime. Boy, did they ever, because now it's fourth and really long. So if you do decide to go for it, people think you might. Oh, they come after him, and it's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Uh, so much for pinning him really deep. Short punt could have pinned him inside the 10. Now great field position the other way. It's never good when you're punting the ball and your eyes see the ball go back behind you <laughs> no. in however form, whether it's over your head or to the side, never good. Now it becomes a race to get to the football so they don't pick it up and take it all the way. This is Fournette. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and Come done. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. On second down and four, Foles. The open man is Westbrook. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Four yards on the play. That's going to lead to first and goal. Now Foles. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. D.D. Westbrook is intended receiver, but it'll be second and goal. Line of scrimmage, again, the four-yard line. Second and goal, Fournette. And he is in for the score! And it is absolute stunned silence here as they win it on the road in overtime.
Uh, partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just huh? want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted. But how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So for the Jaguars, the win moves them up to 5-2 and two now on the year. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Minnesota, they can't quite seem to turn things around as they fall into 2-4 and four now on the year. And they'll look to get back on track next week as they travel up to Detroit to take on the Lions.